Hi there! In today's video we are going to talk about fascia. I mention fascia a lot in my other videos because it's been such a basic and crucial part of my healing journey. So I've healed um, prolapse and starting to heal my birth injuries which are giving me some other symptoms, not only prolapse, but I'm really on a journey where fascia has been um, I've gained so much more understanding of fascia. I'm a yoga teacher, so I've always been aware of fascia or always like the last 15 years. But now I, I really, really understand how the body can, you know, it, it can create so much imbalance if you don't work with the fascia, if you, f if you are experiencing any symptom in your body, not only in your pelvic floor, it's, it's for the whole body. So uh, just for, for anyone who's completely, completely new here, uh, fascia is like a web throughout the body that, you know, if, if you, like a spider web, if you cut the web in one corner, the whole web will be affected and react to that. So that's kind of the basic thing. And it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's, the fascia is our skin. It's, it holds the body together. It's in every internal organ. It's in it, in, in, uh, it's around it, it's in the muscles, it's around the muscles, it's in the ligaments. And maybe most importantly, it's really deeply connected to our nervous system. Our nervous system is communicating through this web of fascia into the body. And therefore it's really deeply connected in, to our brain. And our brain, is the organ that is experiencing our body. So not only like what's happening physically in the body, but through the fascia and the nervous system into the brain will also affect the ex experience of whatever imbalance or injury you are facing. So this guy, Tom Myers, he's, he's been amazing for fascia. He's done a lot of research. He's like the first person who's really looking deeply into this because the, the healthcare system uh, and the science in general has been focusing a lot on like muscles and skeleton and, and like the organs and stuff, but they've always overlooked the, the fascia. And he's just gonna give you a short image here of like the traditional view of how we look upon the body. Is getting badly outdated rather quickly. The idea that a muscle attaches to a tendon that goes across a joint that is limited by the bone shape and the ligaments, and therefore movement comes about on a leverage principle on Newton's laws. Einstein came a hundred years ago. We're just now bringing a relativistic uh, point of view to body therapy. And I really wanted to do this today, particularly at Google. Yeah. So, <clears throat> it, I mean, you can search uh, his name if you're interested in this. Uh, he knows so much about fascia and he's super inspiring. And this is the whole point. Like we need to start to look at the body from a different perspective and, and not only the body, but injuries. Like that's, that's the whole thing about fascia, like chronic pain, uh, like life quality reducing things in our bodies it's a lot is um you know because of fascia is reacting to something in one corner of the body and it affects the whole body and this guy he's a physiotherapist i thought you know here you'll see what the fascia looks like and also just from his perspective uh how the lack of knowledge, uh, even for like physiotherapists, um, there's been traditionally in their education. All right, so basically the connective tissue system is something that when we go to anatomy as physical therapists or as an MD or, or as a nurse practitioner or as an RN, you spend probably about 10 to 15 minutes in your whole kind of medical school or, you know, physical therapy curriculum learning about this system, which is the largest organ in the body. So crazy. And it's a very complex, densely innervated, meaning nerves go all through these different fibers and sends a lot of information from your arms, your legs, your periphery up into your brain. Okay. And that's where you perceive a lot of the other problems that are going on in your body. 
So some of the things that happen in your body aren't in the muscle. You feel this muscle pain, this idea that you have a knot in your body. And sometimes it's not the knot that's in the muscle that's causing the pain going up into your brain. It's some of the other connective tissue elements. And those things can transmit and sense very, very small changes in tension throughout your system. Okay. And we'll show you some of the. So, I mean, this is, <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh or cry. The science and the medical system, the healthcare system, um, they have kind of ignored or overlooked the largest organ in our bodies, which is fascia. So it's the connective tissues, it's uh, any other kind of mucous tissue in the body and the skin. It's, it's, it's so much. And now we'll take a closer look at fascia. So this is what fascia looks like uh, zoomed in. And you can see here, you know, it, in the beginning, like when they started to discover fascia, they thought it, it, it looks like this only. But then they started to see that here, you see here, you can work with it and it will start to restructure itself. Like it will start to organize itself. So if you work with heat or pressure or um, maybe even cold, the fascia will respond. Um, respond. So, you know, it's, it's not like this, just this compact thing, which is, which you can't work with. Um, and, you know, it, it, it wants to be balanced. It's striving for that. So as soon as we give the fascia what it needs, it will start to organize in a proper way. And I thought this, um, this video uh, will be really interesting to show how, you know, if you have any, any restriction in your body, how fascia will probably be a part of that. I'm going to give another example, torture Cody some more. And this is a bit more of a complex example. So I'm going to give Cody a pretty severe myofascial restriction at his right hip. <laughs> Good. Now, first of all, can you see how Cody has started to kind of develop some interesting posture? Good. Cody, try to lift your arms for me, please. See where the restriction is? It's even worse than before, by the way. Did you notice that? And then drop the arms back down. Now, Cody's going to attempt to walk with this myofascial restriction. So we're going to go for a little walk. And he's going to walk a little bit interestingly, right? Okay. And we're going to back it up so we don't fall on Dr. Rob. Good. Okay. So... What I want you to see is that, first of all, you already saw how this affects his shoulders. Think about his neck. Can you imagine what might be happening at this hip over here? How that might be compensating and actually wearing on things, maybe even wearing cartilage from the position. Of course, this hip is probably not very happy and this knee could have serious problems. With this pattern, Cody can have plantar fasciitis on his left foot because it has to deal with severe loads and modified impact with every step to try to stabilize him. This is the interesting with fascia, where you think it is, it ain't. So this is, I think this gives you a really nice visual of, you know, how if it's one part of the body, you know, you, he might have been in an accident or anything happened with <clears throat> his fascia uh, and how, how it really affects the whole body. And the same thing goes for our pelvic floor and our, our pelvis, our vagina. So if you give birth uh, and, you know, you, some, you have an injury somewhere and maybe you're not even aware of that injury or that, that you are having scar tissue. Um, it's not like, you know, it's, it, they, they have cut or uh, not even always stitching, but you might anyway have some kind of scar tissue. I mean, if, if you if they have stitched, you are probably more aware of you are having a scar tissue somewhere. But it's also like on the inside, on the vaginal walls. And uh, my dear friend Anna is giving this great example here. She, she, I mean, she's just amazing. Um, I'll post her website, of course, all the websites, so you can go and have a deeper look. But she's talking a lot about biotensegrity. Um, which is also a really interesting part of the fascia, you know, that the body is not like stacked on top, like the feet and leg and uh, 
pelvis and uh, upper body you know it's it's more it's a more fluid like um organ not organ organism uh so at, which we can affect um and so here she's having this model and she's going to show you her experience as a physiotherapist she's one of the first ones who is working with um with fascia in this way out of coffee stirrers and elastic bands so this is a good model of how how we work globally so the elastic bands are our connective tissue also known as our fascia and the coffee stirrers are the everything else so the bones and the organs okay so for example right say this was your uterus okay and this was your pelvic floor and you had a scar here in the pelvic floor can you see how that gets pulled towards it yeah so here's the pelvic floor here's the uterus I'm going to take a scar through that pelvic floor, say it's an episiotomy, and there you go, the uterus is pulled towards it. But then I can release that scar, okay, and then there it goes. Oh, do that Ooh. one more time. That was so good. i got to see that one more time. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Here's the uterus, okay, here are the sit bones, and here's the pelvic floor, and I'm going to take this section of pelvic floor and give it an episiotomy scar. And that, there's the uterus being pulled towards it, and then I'm going to release, and the body corrects, okay? Yeah. So, and also, you know, look at us doing a handstand. We do a handstand and we're fine. We can crawl. We're, we can, you know, we, we're a stretchy, dynamic web. Okay. Um, and this is how our movement works, you know. So in the past, we were always told that movement was like a lever. But that doesn't explain how we can do this. You know? Where's the levers in this? <laughs> so now we know more that it's this, that it's this expansion and contraction of space. Okay. And here is... Here is some tissue that would be, that would become scarred. So here is like a nice healthy piece of pelvic floor tissue. And then what happens when that get, takes a scar? Yeah. yeah, so it gets all tight. Yeah, okay. And then that pulls on the nearby structures. So would you and that's I think it's just a mind blowing thing. Also, I love how Anna speaks about you know that a prolapse for example it's not a fall it's a pull so something is pulling inside the vagina and creates the the, the other tissue can't you know it's not built for for holding back to, to for for that force that the scar tissue creates that she was just showing with this model so and it's just you know, to be able to heal yourself, to start to work with the tissue inside of the vagina, that's been a mind blowing journey for me. And I'll talk more about on how to do that. And of course, I mean, Anna is a great resource. There are some other resources out there. I'll do a separate video for that. So, you know, you have your Smurgos board and you can choose how, how to go about it.